Few people realize that the root of our civilization started at the Temple of Eleusis. This is where thousands of Greeks for over 2,000 years, including Aristotle and Plato, took part in an initiation called the Eleusian Mysteries, which involved a rye-based drink. Now, whatever activated their enlightenment, we'll never know, thanks to rather overzealous Christians who destroyed the great libraries of Alexandria and 100,000 or so scrolls. But historians believe that the rye-based drink contained the ergot fungus, which is a natural source of LSD. Before the Greeks, the Egyptians were using mandrake and henbane and blue lily, which were also favorites of the healers and seers uh, of Europe. However, the church in the 13th century, in the great medieval witch hunt, uh, killed half a million, uh, calling them witches. Meanwhile, in the Indian Vedas, they refer to soma, which was a plant concoction uh, that allowed the priests to connect into the realm of the gods. The uh, healers in Europe uh, used to create an ointment which was placed on a stick and absorbed through the mucous membrane of the vagina. And then the so-called witches would fly and have visions, uh, sometimes guided by a spirit animal such as a black cat. The puma or jaguar uh, is often uh, experienced in ayahuasca ceremonies and is also the sacred animal of the Inca. Uh, their headquarters, Cusco, is based on a map of it. When the medieval witches were tortured, uh, this gave rise to the popular notion uh, that witches flew on broomsticks uh, with black cats. Meanwhile, the Mayans had discovered that certain mushrooms and the sweat from the skin of certain toads uh, acted as entheogens. And the Shipibo Indians in South America found that if you combined a vine with certain plants, such as chacroon, a natural source of DMT, they could make their ayahuasca brew, which would connect them to uh, the great Earth Mother. How on earth uh, these discoveries were made, the mind boggles but many are based on dimethyltryptamine, or DMT. This is a naturally occurring entheogen in the human brain. Uh, by seven months of fetal development, we already have receptors for it, and it's quite concentrated in the pineal gland. Dimethyltryptamine is very closely related to serotonin, the brain's happy chemical, and to melatonin, which keeps us connected with the Earth's uh, cycle of day and night. I believe that these entheogens throughout the ages have catalyzed cultural revolutions. And even now in the digital age and revolution that we're going through, this may have been catalyzed by freeing up the thinking of uh, digital pioneers in you know, Silicon Valley and California. Many great discoveries have been made uh, thanks to entheogens. For example, Crick worked out the structure of DNA on an acid trip. But what happened uh, in the 50s is that the kids uh, didn't want to play war games. So LSD and hallucinogens were banned and all research was stopped and myths were created about them. This was a terrible form of censorship, much like the Catholic Church who banned telescopes for 100 years after Copernicus proposed that the Earth orbited the Sun. Entheogens for consciousness and the human mind are what a telescope is for an astronomer or a microscope is for a medical researcher. But thankfully, this age of terrible censorship is coming to an end. And Lady Amanda Fielding at the Beckley Foundation has done a tremendous job now with a dozen trials happening in different universities. She says, Humankind has made a terrible mistake by criminalizing this magic key to our deeper soul. Thanks to recent research, the first allowed for 50 years, we know that entheogens help parts of the brain connect to other parts of the brain that don't normally talk. Entheogens um, activate different parts of the brain and allow them to talk to each other, areas that don't normally connect. And this can at times seem rather chaotic and overwhelming, but with the right guidance 
Uh, this can lead to tremendous breakthroughs. Studies have already shown great effects with post-traumatic stress disorder, with depression and with anxiety. My teacher, the late Dr. Abram Hoffer, was one of the first to use LSD successfully in the treatment of alcoholism. He was research director for the province of Saskatchewan in Canada and made the extraordinary discovery that schizophrenics excrete a substance in their urine, which is also found in Native Americans when they take the cactus peyote containing mescaline. And he worked out that these schizophrenics were effectively hallucinating 24 seven. And the antidote would be a large amount of B vitamins, which remains today one of the most effective treatments for schizophrenia, although it's widely ignored. The great philosopher and writer Aldous Huxley tried some mescaline and wrote a book called The Doors of Perception about his experience after the great quote of William Blake. For man, if perception were cleansed, everything would appear to man as it is, infinite. For man has closed himself up till he sees all things through narrow chinks of his cavern. Jim Morrison incidentally read the book and named his band The Doors. I think it's crazy that entheogens are classified along with heroin and cocaine where they're neither harmful uh, nor capable of addiction or fatal overdose. They have a lot to teach us about connection.